Thanks for staying with us. Discussion that's been happening both on and off uh, live TV, but a very interesting one at that. And these are some of your thoughts tonight. Remember, you can weigh in 2242 is the SMS line, and the hashtag is Monday Report. This is what some Kenyans are saying this evening. Fellow Muya, you say panic buying is causing fewer shortages, not supply chain issues. Okay. Um, what else are, you, are Kenyans saying this evening? Um, this is Kadure Sasha. Is it safe how guys have been buying fuel using containers? Isn't that illegal? Okay. Okay. It's a good one. Uh, this is from Navy 1922. When will this problem come to an end? All right. We. Kamau, Mike, can the PS tell us, since the money for the subsidies has been signed off from the supplementary budget, should we expect a further hike in the price of fuel? OK. All right, let's get some thoughts. from. Uh, and uh, Marty, let me start with you. We are seeing Kenyans moving around with uh, jerry cans. Safety concerns around that? I'm sure you know a thing or two on the same. Yeah, yes, uh, actually, they are prescribed kind of uh, jerry can that uh, are allowable to, to, to get a, a petrol because it's a flammable, a flammable uh, product. But now, the, the, where we are in right now, we are in extraordinary uh, situation where, as we've been saying, panic has set in. And when this panic has set in, it's like the adage goes, extraordinary times will have people doing extraordinary things. So uh, it is illegal and it's actually um, a health hazard, but Kenyans will be forgiven for getting into that behavior right now because it's not your normal kind of day that you have to go for fuel. Actually, in a normal day, unless your vehicle has been stuck on the road, nobody goes uh, for fuel with a jerry can. Okay, so it's, it's not advisable, but what are they going to do right now? Yes. I, I think PSU then can talk about when, when will this end? I think it's come up once or twice. Why, why don't we do a quick poll? I, I'm saying Thursday, and then we can ask around. Well, we want to take you, you know, you're the man who would know when. I think Thursday. You think Thursday? Not, I think you told another station Wednesday. Yeah, but the Wednesday is the end, so when you wake up on Thursday... Should be all fine. Should be good. Should be good. Okay. I don't know, Kwame, if you want to say anything, or I take a few more. <laughs> Let's Let me take a few more. OK, let's, let's put up a few more. Uh, and then, uh, Kimutai, I'll come to you as well. I know you're still on the line. Um, this is what else you're saying this evening. Um, OK, Navy already asked, when will this problem come to an end? We already tackled that one. Let's see what else we have. Number 2242 is that SMS line. Um, can we expect a price hike? Uh, a further hike in the price of fuel, okay. Kamau, I'll, I'll pose that question. Um, what else do we have? Okay, I think we have, we have a problem with the system. Uh, P.S., talk to us about, could there be another price hike? There could be. Because of local issues? No, international issues. I think that, I, I, like I alluded to you earlier on, mm -hmm. um, the price of diesel internationally has gone up $260 per tonne. Mm -hmm. And for super petrol, it's $150 per ton. So tougher days ahead. I'm not sure. You see, the thing is, eh, uh, as it is now, we are not paying market price. We are cushioned by the subsidy by something like 20 shillings per liter. So really, uh, I mean, we are very fortunate compared to what our neighbors in Uganda are paying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or South Africa for that matter. And for those who feel that we've just been kicking a can down the road, that we will eventually have to pick up? Y you know, at the end of the day, the government has to take care of the Mwanaichi. That's our first priority. I know it doesn't seem like that uh, many times, but that is Especially our, tonight. Especially know, tonight. The pictures but, we've shown you. Yes, mm -hmm. but don't forget where this is coming from. It's coming from a good place. If we had been experiencing the prices that, the real prices, we would have been in a deeper situation than we are now. People would be paying much, much more. Don't forget, I told you, we've given you 53 billion. If it's your own money, we've given it back to you. 53 billion in the last one year. In subsidies alone. In subsidies alone. Oh, Kwame, a viewer is asking, is it that the government's pricing formula isn't capable of absorbing shocks? Um, you, you know, a, a working market, a real price working market actually makes sure that those shocks um, are adjusted by the people in the value chain, not a bureaucrat sitting at the 
uh, Energy, Petroleum and Petroleum Regulatory Authority. I mean, regardless of their very high qualifications, there's just something about markets that they can't, cannot shift. Um, so the best way to actually make sure that everybody is paying the price that their product costs is to, and every marketer has the best, uh, you align the interest of the marketer and, and their client to give them the best price, is to allow for competition and to allow for that price to reflect what it does. I mean, what, what, it, really, what it really should. Mm -hmm. um, so if you did that, that would be a better model than what we have now. So for instance, I mean, petroleum was first um, deregulated, prices were first deregulated in Kenya, I think in the mid 90s. And right up to the time, with the exception of Kenyans claiming that there was gouging by the big international farms, nobody ever had the fear that actually you're running out of fuel and, and stuff like that. So yes, this is a small crease. It's going to obviously shift because it's not about supply. It's actually about the fact that we have what Martin has mentioned. Okay. Um, so the best way for a shock to actually be absorbed in a market is for everybody in the value chain to do, to use the knowledge that they want to, to reduce that shock. Um, as it is now, nobody is doing that shock. So what you're doing is you're transferring costs by letting I mean, wholesalers take their margin and then pushing it out there uh, with the controls to the, to the small traders. And they're unwilling to take petrol and actual, I mean, fuels and actually trade it because they'll be losing money. So that's it. So what will the next eight months, and I want to put you to put on your economist hat at this point, what could the next eight months look like for ordinary Kenyans with oil marketers who are no longer willing to wait for government to pay them, with a war happening out there that, that is affecting prices to some extent, with a general election? Maura, you're leading me to say it's hard. And you're right, it's going to be hard for two reasons. If you look at the, the, the two things are happening that are not in the control of government of Kenya. One is that I think this, nobody knows when the invasion, Russian invasion of Ukraine will end. And for as long as that happens, there's going to be tension around the prices of crude petroleum. So it's still going to go up. That cannot be controlled by the government of Kenya. The second is I think we are reaching the tail end of an unraveling as well of the Kenya shilling against the dollar because the dollar is getting stronger in some places globally. So if those two collide, there's not much that can be done. Even with the cushioning and even with the reserve fund, it will be depleted fairly quickly. Um, so my view is it's going to become very clear that those prices will continue to go up. Now what is the pressure that government could do to ease? Maybe taxes, reduce a little bit of them, but government does not have space right now for a lot of cash. So it's an unfortunate set of circumstances that have collided with a bad pricing system. And I think the consumers just have to tighten their belt. Sounds like uh, good news for the next government. <laughs> you've you've, you've, you've some seemingly summarized what they will be waiting for them. Uh, I would ask P.S. that question. I know he wouldn't want to delve into that. Let's hear from Kimutai. Kimutai, your final thoughts on this, and you've heard from uh, some of the SMSs that I've read as well. Uh, from the transport side, you hear Thursday, things could be back to normal. Uh, what does that mean for you? Well, I think uh, the P.S. statement is so ambitious. But Thursday is just uh, the two days to come. And uh, well, anyway, it's good for us to have that hope. And, uh, and, and, and we know very well that that might not be able to be possible. But the economist has spoken. Kwame has said it very well. So for me, a message to Kenyans who use public transport services is that they brace themselves because as it appears, we are using a lot of words to cushion what could be happening. The PS is being evasive, you know, he's try he doesn't want to say the fuel will go up, the prices of fuel will go up, which actually we can read under the line. So uh, for us as a, as a business community and uh, people who are pro facilitating the economic activities in the country, then we, we don't have means to cushion or subsidies to, to, to cushion ourselves and the passengers who are using the service. So if anything, will always pass the cost to the right person, the person consuming the service. And it's very unfortunate, especially now that we are, we are, we are faced by so many things. Now, when we talk of, you know, even, even uh, um, uh, Russia, Russia has held its exports. So even if they stopped the invasion, I'm, I'm sure they will not be, I mean, if they wanted to release the, the, the oil, they would today because it's them who supply most parts of Europe. So uh, I, I don't think that we can dwell that on that so much as, a, as something to liberate us from the problem where we are in now. What I see is that uh, we are using very soft words. 
would rather say, like uh, the, the, the Tanzanian president said, be ready, it's not themselves. It's an international, you know, because these things are not, uh, are not, uh, uh, are not ours. And uh, I like the way the PSA said that we don't have a problem locally. But internationally, then uh, that was, we have to, you know, hatch that for ourselves, knowing that uh, uh, price for fuel is imminent and it's coming. And we know it's a tsunami. It will really uh, affect uh, many, many, many people in the country. So for me, I would, you know, uh, I've just kept listening and uh, I've seen that uh, things are not very right. We could be cushioning our, 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 our words or using the right words that would comfort people. But somehow the reality is coming. And uh, I can read below the line that, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we have, will be faced by many things because farmers are... Uh, I'm in Kericho now, and people have delayed, in, you know, uh, it's planting season, and people have not plowed, tilted their lands. So um, so it's not only public transport, because every goods that we do have at the selling point must have been transported. And if it came from the farms, we know very well that the, the, and then the cost of, you know, uh, plowing and uh, transporting is going to go up. So what happens? Kenyans will be braced, not only those who are traveling, but even those who are going to have foods on their tables. The supermarkets definitely will have to hike the prices of their commodities. But it's quite unfortunate. But we, we have nothing. We are helpless as Kenyans. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, last messages here. And, and PSD is actually to you. Um, one uh, viewer is saying here, uh, they still don't, they say, PS not clear on who or what is to blame. He says international markets. Again, he says after paying $8 billion, the crisis will be over. Again, he says there's enough fuel in the country. If there's enough fuel in the country, as KPC said, then where are people queuing? I can't understand him. This is from Raymond uh, Matata. Uh, we have Fredo Bachi Machoka asking this evening, uh, can the PS tell us more about electric vehicles importation? Is that a possible solution to the crisis that we find ourselves in? That's uh, 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 Fredo Bachi Machoka uh, of uh, Raw Media Services. Um, uh, a viewer here, no name, but you say, is it time that government reviews taxes charged on fuel, Moshimiwa uh, Kimani Shungwa asking, uh, why has the government frustrated parliament's attempt to pass the petroleum taxes and levies amendment bill 2021? Is that also for Kenyans to blame? Uh, do, does the PS support the passage as it sought to reduce the levy and taxes that make our fuel more expensive than some of our neighbors? Uh, they also want to know who authorized uh, them to spend the petroleum fund, that's a consumer protection fund without parliamentary approval, who are the private entities who got funds from the fund? I mean, there's so many questions, Piers. So I'll stop there and, and ask you as your final word to tackle some of these. So let's start off with the, um, with the reducing of taxes. Yes. As uh, Kwame said, that is the prerogative of parliament. So I'm not going to even go there. Okay. That's the first thing. The second thing with uh, Fredo Bachi Machoka on... Um, Importation of electric vehicles. Is that a solution for those who can afford it? I mean, if you, yeah, if, you, if you can afford it, yeah, but then you start complaining about the price of electricity, you know? And don't forget, we tried to reduce the importation, you know, from eight years, eight-year-old vehicles to six-year-old vehicles. There was hue and cry. Kenyan said, well, we're out of touch with reality, we're elitist, no one can afford a six-year-old car, so how are we going to get to electric? I think we are being a little bit ambitious. And it's not, a sh it's not going to solve the, the crisis that is there now. Okay. So, and, and the last question. What, what Kimani Shungo had a, a whole bunch. Yeah, he had he a whole blames, bunch. He uh, blames your ministry for frustrating parliament taxes and levies amendment bill 2021. I, I wouldn't know if my ministry has, uh, has frustrated him because we have got nothing to do with taxes as a ministry. Would, would this law make a difference? No, it would not make any difference. Because what would happen is if... If let's say, for example, let's say, for example, in September it was removed. The taxes were removed in September. So the five shillings disappeared and the, the margin, another five shillings disappeared and another five shillings disappeared from the taxes. So that's 15 shillings per liter disappears mm -hmm. from the price. The current prices are higher than that 15 shillings that was there in September. We would now have to going back saying, Serikali, please do something about it now. But we'd have no optionality because there would be no taxes. There would be no cushioning to be done. We would just be sitting here looking at each other, trying to figure out how we're going to fix this problem. So leadership is difficult. You have to make um, tough decisions, 
even though they are unpopular, and then we see how we can reap those benefits later. It's, so, it's, it's tough. And in a nutshell, so you, government needs the taxes to cushion Kenyans with a subsidy? You've collected the five shillings all this time. I told you that you have been collecting five shillings. You're paying out 20. It, it, it sounds like fuzzy mathematics. Not necessarily. If, 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 you, if, you were to, if, if, if you didn't have the five shillings to cushion, if you didn't have that subsidy to cushion, today you would be paying 154 shillings per liter for super. Ask the economist. You're paying 130. Yes, I think, I think that if somebody is consuming uh, super today, right, you need to make a decision about whether you really want to drive your car today or take some other means. Mm. That is the thing. And that's the decision that my view is this collective uh, agreement between parliament and the executive is lying to us that you're not paying. But taking five shillings from you and, and a few weeks later telling you that we're actually cushioning you for 20 shillings and losing 15 shillings, which is then paid by other taxpayers. My view is that the days of the price control mechanism has just crumbled. A crisis has taken place. That's it's shown us that it has. To, to them, to parliamentarians, to whoever. Precisely. Let people who are going to drive know that if you're buying fuel from Martin, you're buying fuel and you're paying the price of your real product, not one that is cushioned by other people who are walking because they too pay taxes. And here you are picking uh, 15 shillings subsidy for a person who drives a car in Kenya, who's definitely a very rich man by Kenyan standards. Sounds like we're between a rock and a hard place. Gentlemen, I want to really thank you for your time this evening. We've had PS Petroleum and Mining, Andrew Kamal, thank you for staying with us. Uh, we've had uh, uh, um, Kwame Owino, the CEO of the Institute of Economic Affairs, here with us in studio. Next to him, Martin Chomba, Chair of the Petroleum Outlets Association of Kenya. Also, thank you for your time today. And joining us virtually has been Simon Kimutai, the Chair of the Matatu Owners Association. A difficult conversation to have. Bear in mind, it's one that hits the pockets hard. And we are told that maybe the situation for the foreseeable future and here on Citizen TV we endeavor to continually update you and get the right people to answer your questions we did that today and we'll try and do that again for you tomorrow and in the days to come thanks for having tuned in this has been the Monday report my name is Wahiga Moora standing or should I say sitting in for Trevor Mbija he'll be back next week but on behalf of the whole great team that's made this broadcast possible you know, I sign language interpreter who has been working tirelessly Yulanzale Asante Sana have a good night 